ਅਸੀਂ 100 ਸਾਲ ਕਿਉਂ ਵੇਟ ਕੀਤਾ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣਾ ਫਰਜ਼ ਅੱਜ ਉਦਾ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਸੋਚਿਆ ਕਿ ਮੁੱਦਾ ਸੀ ਜਾਰੀ ਰੱਖੀਏ ਅਕਾਲ ਚੈਨਲ ਨੂੰ ਸਬਸਕ੍ਰਾਈਬ ਕਰੋ ਨਵੀਂ ਵੀਡੀਓਜ਼ ਦੀ ਨੋਟੀਫਿਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਬੈਲ ਆਈਕਨ ਨੂੰ ਕਲਿੱਕ ਕਰਨਾ ਨਾ ਭੁੱਲਣਾ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਜੀ ਮਾਈ ਨੇਮ ਇਜ਼ ਪਾਲ ਜਾਲੇ ਐਂਡ ਮਾਈ ਨੇਮ ਇਜ਼ ਪ੍ਰੀਤੀ ਕੌਰ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਹਮੇਸ਼ਾ ਦੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਲੇਟ ਸ਼ੋ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਅਗੇਨ ਟੂ ਅਕਾਲ ਚੈਨਲਸ ਲੇਟ ਸ਼ੋ ਅਕਾਲ ਚੈਨਲ ਤੋਂ ਹਮੇਸ਼ਾ ਮੈਂ ਰਿਪੀਟ ਕਰਦਾ ਹਾਂ 108 ਘੰਟੇ ਤੋਂ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਰੀਸੈਂਟਲੀ ਵੀ ਗੋਨ ਲਾਂਚਡ ਲਾਈਵ ਇਨ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਯੂ ਐਸ ਏ ਐਂਡ ਲਾਸਟ ਸੈਟਰਡੇ ਵੀ ਲਾਂਚਡ ਇਨ ਆਸਟ੍ਰੇਲੀਆ uh the channel is going high every day by day bala lamma safare but this is not possible without you people such an Todi exciting sport, time hai, such an exciting time absolutely toda you know toda sport toda effort to see that you know we will be moving sky high uh i want this channel to be recognized as one of the top channel which is at the moment officially number of one channel of course and also because everybody is watching exactly main chahta hu ki aise bollywood channel english channel na lo top te hue ਬੜੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਆਪਣਾ ਸਿੱਖਣ ਦਾ ਚੈਨਲ ਹੈ ਬੜੀ ਮਾਨ ਵਾਲੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸਾਡਾ ਐ ਵੀ ਵਾਸ ਗਿਵਿੰਗ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਟਿਵ ਸਬਜੈਕਟਸ ਇਜ਼ਨਟ ਇਟ ਵੀ ਟ੍ਰਾਈ ਟੂ ਵੀ ਟ੍ਰਾਈ ਟੂ ਐ ਮੀ ਕੀਪਿੰਗ ਏਵਰੀਬਡੀ ਇਨਫੋਰਮਡ ਐਂਡ ਕੀਪਿੰਗ ਦ ਕਲਚਰ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਐਗਜ਼ੈਕਟਲੀ ਜੋ ਪ੍ਰੀਤੀ ਨੇ ਕਲਚਰ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਕੀਪਿੰਗ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਪਤਾ ਲਾਸਟ ਵੀਕ ਮੈਂ ਕੰਪਲੇਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੈਂ ਗੱਲ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਸੀ ਸੀ ਨਾ 100 ਸਾਲ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਨੇ ਵਾਲੇ ਸੇ 100 ਸਾਲ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗ ਗਿਆ ਮੈਂ ਜਿਹਲੇ ਵਾਲੇ ਬਾਗ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਦਾ ਤੇ ਯੂ نو ਮੈਨੂੰ ਬੜਾ ਫੀਲ ਹੋਇਆ ਕਿ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ 100 ਸਾਲ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕਦਮ ਹਾ ਗਾਮਾ ਚੱਕ ਦਿੱਤਾ 99 ਇਅਰਸ ਗੋ 98 ਇਅਰਸ ਗੋ ਥਿੰਕਸ ਵਰ ਵੈਰੀ ਕੁਆਇਟ ਮੇਬੀ ਥੋੜੇ ਥੋੜੇ ਕਿਤੇ ਮੀਟਿੰਗਾਂ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਸੀ ਕਿਤੇ ਬੁੱਕਸ ਲਿਖੀਆਂ ਜਾਂਦੀਆਂ ਸੀ ਬਟ ਨਥਿੰਗ ਐਦ ਦਾ ਮੁੱਦਾ ਠਾਇਆ ਗਿਆ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਹੁਣ ਆਫਟਰ 100 ਸਾਲ ਤੱਕ ਕੀਤਾ ਨਾ ਇਟਸ ਸੋ ਲਾਈਕ ਲਿਫਟ ਬਿਹਾਈਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਸਪਰੈਸਡ ਐਗਜ਼ੈਕਟਲੀ ਐਂਡ ਇਟਸ ਆਰ ਜੌਬ ਨਾਓ ਐਂਡ ਏਵਰੀਬਡੀਜ਼ ਜੌਬ ਟੂ ਲਾਈਕ ਲਿਫਟ ਇਟ ਅਪ ਮੇਰੇ ਮਗੂ ਬਹੁਤ ਆਪਣੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਨਾ ਰਿਲੇਟਿਡ ਹੈ ਜਿਹਲੇ ਵਾਲਾ ਬੈਗ ਇਸ ਖਾਨਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਆਪਣੇ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਸਾਰੇ ਨਾਲ ਉਤੇ ਹਰ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਉਹ ਮੁਸਲਮ ਸੇ ਹਿੰਦੂ ਸੀ ਸਿੱਖ ਸੇਗੇ ਅਸੀਂ 100 ਸਾਲ ਕਿਉਂ ਵੇਟ ਕੀਤਾ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣਾ ਫਰਜ਼ ਅੱਜ ਉਦਾ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਸੋਚਿਆ ਕਿ ਮੁੱਦਾ ਸੀ ਜਾਰੀ ਰੱਖੀਏ ਔਰ ਇਹ ਜਾਰੀ ਰੱਖਣ ਨਾਲ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਬੜੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਬੰਦੇ ਬੜੇ ਇੰਟੈਲੈਕਚੁਅਲ ਗੈਸਟ ਚਾਹੀਦੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਸਬਜੈਕਟ ਬਾਰੇ ਨੌਲੇਜ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਥੋੜੇ ਬਹੁਤੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਸਵਾਲ ਨੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਸਵਾਲ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਨੂੰ ਜਵਾਬ ਦੇ ਸਕਣਗੇ ਐਗਜ਼ੈਕਟਲੀ ਪਾਲ ਉਸਾ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ you know it's getting left behind exactly it's getting left behind we don't want to no, wait another we, 100 years to exactly no uh, we don't want to wait another couple of weeks even so this is a fresh subject that's why we yeah. repeated the show today uh before my jana show repeat kar to see sadi background dekhte ho sadi sound the quality sadi picture the quality uh jere behind the scene udhar na mishap pull le jande ne bande ho lekin aaj mere paas kuch khad maqsad hai ke main us saanu yaad kara sada camera man chukdev singh Uh, last week oh the happy birthday siga so happy i need birthday. to wish him happy birthday happy so, birthday sigdev now honestly aj to si jo vi dekhde ho sade assi jo do program execute karde na ena loka di sadi help hundi hai these are the guys so let us swaga laga de ne then the working behind the scenes uh, we can't do it without them as well happy birthday sigdev hope you enjoyed your week we wish and, you many uh, happy returns many. and uh, keep up the good work and uh, help us uh, go even sky high uh, chalo anyway we will uh, not wait let our guest wait karan uh, very important both important mudda bhi assi gal karni hai main so aag dikha dona paaji sade param ji se ki paaji waj ka khalsa waj ki fate paaji pehle te main thoda shukran na karda ki tu si time kad ke aaye ho aur time ek main na le bhi kamanga thoda farz bhi banda because tu si historian hai ke tu le pas knowledge hai te i can find anybody ਜੋ ਮਨੂ ਐਚ ਹੀ ਚਾਹਤ ਕਰ ਸਕੇਗਾ ਸੋ ਸਾਡਾ ਫਰਜ਼ ਬੰਦ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਬੁਲਾਇਆ ਜਾਏ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੀ
um, all the history books. There's books on Maharaja and Jeet Singh at home. And she said, I read them all. Mm. Wow. And, and, I, and we think that that must have had an impact on me because later on in life, I was, um, I was a chartered accountant. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, career just beginning. And then I stopped it to jump onto history, heritage, art, architecture, you know, studying and, and just because researching. Just because mother has done <laughs> Well, there's a combination of factors. One is my mother, you know, the pregnancy thing, it must affect the oh, child. Oh, that, right? that, that, that does, yeah. they do uh, say that it does, the yeah. What impact that has. Exactly. And so there's that desire. My father was very influential. He was incredibly uh, interested in history and he, he told me lots and lots of interest. He used to read and collect old books and mm -hmm. so he'd always tell me stories that other people weren't able to tell me so I was very uh, grateful to that and historically our ancestry goes back so my father's dada was from a family who had uh, one of the characters in the 17th century served Guru Har Gobind and appears in Sikh history Wow. Uh, Rai. and on his daddi side he was descended from uh, two warriors called Ali Singh, Mali Singh, mm -hmm. who were warriors of uh, Banda Singh Bahadur. Mm. And Ali Singh actually was a deputy governor of Sarhand and he was in the group that was executed in Delhi in 1716, just before Banda. So we've got lots of history in, in our And mind. the family tree. In the family of. tree, it says it's imbued with this history. But in all my, I'm one of five children and I was the only one who went on the history, went mad on history. Mm, no, so, it's good. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I grew up in a very English area. Um, back in those days, there weren't many Punjabi or Sikh families. Um, there was, you know, on, the, on the way to school every morning, primary school, there were skinheads and, and those sorts of issues. As you know, England was a different mm. place back in those days. And then we eventually moved to West London, Southall, then Heston, Hounslow, and uh, I you know, did my A-levels. A then went on to do a degree in economics, and then um, eventually got into um, uh, a big accountancy firm, one of the big, big four firms. Did a, became a chartered accountant, uh, and and really, uh, what happened was back in 1999 was the big 300th anniversary of the Khalsa. Okay. And at that time, the BBC were getting interested in what was going on, and mm -hmm. I appeared in a program with a few other friends about that thing, and, and it was all kind of tying in. And there was a big exhibition that happened in London, mm -hmm. the Victoria and Albert Museum, mm -hmm. called the Arts of the Sea Kingdoms. And that was yeah. hugely influential on um, myself and uh, a few of our friends. We, we we'd been researching for five or six years, trying to find our identity because we we're very English minded Sikhs. I'd never been to India until the age of 24. That, that would right. have been a question because to see totally English environment brought up Kitagio and totally away in a way about the Indian culture and especially the Indian history and to see where Jale Male Bhag Bale you been you know. Well we used to go to the Gudra. My father was all he did was work and keep them. Listen to keep them, right? That's all he did and it was we used to go to the Shepherd's Bush Gudwara every Sunday, you know the whole family. And uh, so we had that sort of bedrock. We understood mm. that we're part of this thing. But as kids, there's nothing really to latch on to. Exactly. Right. It's not yeah. exciting. It's not interesting. Mm. You know, in the, in the good I remember always asking him, can I go outside and play now? And he yeah. would say, no, you have to sit and listen. <laughs> you don't realise what, what your heritage <coughs> is, what your background is, what the values are. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's what history does. History is, a, it, history is not the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Mm -hmm. the truth. It's it. not that. It's, it's different versions of events. But what history does is it gives you a sense of belonging, identity. It gives you a sense of who your role models are, what, your, what the expectations are set for you. For Sikhs, the expectations are very high um, in terms of moral character and, and you know, the, the key characteristics in terms of how you operate in the world. You've got to be a part of it, but not stuck mm -hmm. in it and not, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all that sort of stuff. So I remember, you know, it's probably very familiar to lots of people. I was, uh, when 1984 happened, that was a pivotal moment. I was 12 years old when the Operation Blue Star took place. I remember walking to school, I went to school in Cranford Community School, and I did this one and a half mile trek. And as I was walking along, within a few weeks of that happening, there's an old elderly Sikh gentleman, so he stopped me in the morning and said, Kaka, did I bring together? And I went, huh? I yeah, there's a lot of people that don't know still, yeah, even well, now. That was those days, I didn't yeah. have a clue, I'd never been to India, and you know, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. And that was one little thing that sort of made me think, oh, a bit stupid. You know, this gentleman was asking me a simple question, I don't know. And then at school, people s used to ask me, he said, are you Jato mm. mm. And I didn't know. We didn't talk about exactly. this. Exactly. Yeah. Uh. And, then, and then that was another thing. And then the, 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 the straw that broke the camel's back was in a religious education class. And we were, we were covering 1699, right, Khalsa, mm -hmm. Sajjagya. And the teacher 
looked around. There's a few Sikhs in the class, and I had a, I looked, you know, I had a jura and everything, right. and, um, and there's a few other Sikhs. And uh, she said, "Okay, we're going to cover this now." Okay, so Palmjet, you tell us what happened in 1699. <laughs> and I, I just froze, and I made a complete. It's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? It Hugely can embarrassing. be embarrassing because you know these English people, British, they know more about Sikhi. Yeah, well, well, this is the thing. Some well, of them. The thing is, I had no real connection. I, I, you know, life was there was no, there's no TV programs, mm -hmm. there's nothing in films, no, the actors. Yeah, you know, I, I had no connection to it. So, those things pricked me. And then I started to ask myself questions, and the fundamental questions. One, I had two questions really, that that propelled me on a search for who I was and identity, and that's really where everything's kind of come out from. Uh, that's led to the sort of work we're doing now in the future. And the questions were one, well, if I'm a Sikh of the Guru, then, of the Guru Granth Sahib, then what's in the Guru Granth Sahib? Exactly. The Mathatek and everything mm. we bow down, but I didn't have a clue. Mm. What's the meaning behind it? Meaning, what, what's the content, Tense. the organisation, the language, authors, everything and anything. And then I started going, well, I need to know. Mm -hmm. A lot of things we do just because other people do it. Absolutely. Exactly. Right. And it's even more so because uh, our parents were, you know, from immigrant backgrounds, parents have, they, they grew up in this environment, right? So they just get a certain amount of knowledge and they do because it's the cultural thing. They come here, they crystallized their culture. Mm -hmm. That's what people do when they want to be safe. They stick with what they know. And they, they, they never had anyone questioning them. Whereas now, come to this country, everyone says, why do you do this? What's this about? It's mm. new, it's different, yeah. it's, it's novel. And they never had to answer those questions, whereas we did. And even and now, the generation did, wants to know these questions. There's, there's an incredible drive to always learn. Every generation, every five, six years, people come at university going on a, 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 you know, I want to know who I am, you know, that whole thing. So there's a constant need to be telling stories and to visit our past and history mm -hmm. and look and keep on searching. So that's really the angle we've, been take, we've taken, myself and a group of friends, with the publishing and, and the storytelling. Yeah, every generation do you, feel, do you think that the, that time from... Uh, previous generation to today's generation, history has been diluted or been lost? Okay, this goes back to the question. So the, the first question was that, what's in the Guru Granth Sahib? If that's my Guru, if I'm a Sikh of the Guru, then what, what's in it? The second question was, on this point of traditions and history and mm -hmm. dilution, I said, well, who, who has preserved Guru Gobind Singh's traditions? Exactly. Right? That's the fundamental question. Who's preserved them? And if, they, if someone has preserved them, have they preserved them in their pristine form? Or have they been diluted? Mm. Now, so you do a little tree diagram. Has somebody preserved them? If you've got a no, then a Sikhs were in deep trouble. How do you mean? Well, if you haven't got the traditions of your guru, then how do you know what you're doing is within the principles of what the guru is saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's how Sikhi gets passed down from generation to generation. You, have, you, you pass the, the principles down and, and an understanding of how you approach scenarios, right? So you can, you know, create rules to mm -hmm. answer, the, the, you know, uh, have solutions to problems that crop up depending on where you are, your time, place, circumstance. If you've got no traditions, you're in deep trouble mm. as a community. Mm. But if somebody has preserved them, then the next question is, fully preserved, 100% or not? 100%, right. great, then let's find those people who've got them and learn from them. Not preserved? Well, why not? Mm -hmm. What's happened? And I, that was where I went to. I thought there may be some people who have it, and it's, I ended up thinking it's diluted. And that's where the search begins to, to find out why. As a historian. As a historian. But yeah, I think um, it's very important. Sorry, I'm going to come back to you. Sandeep, please. Uh, last week, uh, Preeti Nick Court, which I really touched my mm. heart, that delayed justice is unjust. It's very simple. It's very simple. It's very simple. Mm. Yeah? So, जो जेले वाले बादी गाल करिए 1919 So you know it is unjustice. What are we looking for now? Well, this is the big question, isn't it? Because of the centenary, minds are now focused on what happened, why did it happen, and why was it. Why have we not got an apology? This is the, the, the thing that people yeah. grasp onto. Now, in many ways, the apology, you know, it, it, if you go back to the event itself, a lot of people do not even know the story behind, mm. the actual story behind Jelly Wanna But it, that's why we're doing a second show to yeah. bring as much as we can. It, exactly. So, 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 so,
But we'll try to do as much as we can. Absolutely. And that's why we've done this book mm -hmm. as a gateway into this story. Uh -huh. So that people can then begin a journey of discovery. Because lots of books have been done. Mm -hmm. Lots of people have researched it, but they're not on our radar necessarily. So the story of Jodi Wanabag, really, we need to understand that before we talk about things like apologies and exactly. what needs yeah. to happen Go now. right back to the history. Yeah, if we go back to the history, the story of Jodi Wanabag, the, 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 the key point really is around World War I. Mm -hmm. right? Now, World War I, uh, it, when, when you know, August, the wars declared, August 1914, King George V calls on India for help because there's a Western Front in France and it's close to collapse and they know they haven't got enough troops signed up mm. right, to hold the line. So what do they do? They call out to India for men, money, munitions. Mm -hmm. And the call goes out and incredibly there's Indian troops amongst them Sikh regiments landing in Marseille in the south of France at the end of September. So it's a very okay. quick response. They, you know, they're going by ship. Um, just to put that in context, you know the Komagatu Maru story where the, the Sikhs and the others are returned from Canada? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That ship arrives in Calcutta having been refused the entry in Canada okay. uh, a day before, I believe, the Sikhs and the other Indian troops arrived in Marseille. So it's a very interesting two-ship two story, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the Sikhs and everyone, you know, all these uh, Indian troops, 1.5 million in total, combatants, non-combatants, they, they, they help save the, the Allies, the contribution of the Indian forces um, is equivalent in, in human terms, 1.5 million, to the sum total of all the, the white dominions of Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and white South Africa. Mm -hmm. All their contribution of men is the same as India alone, okay. which is incredible. And if you look at the stats, most of the Indian troops wore turbans, Hindu, Muslim, and Sikh, Sari, Pondi, the, yeah. One in six of the uh, the men furnished by the British Crown wore turbans in World War mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Very important statistic to know. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, during that time, not everyone was uh, in support of the war effort mm -hmm. in India. And remember, Punjab is the, the strongest contributor because they've got this, uh, after the, what they call the Indian Mutiny or the Great War of Uprising, uh, Great War of Independence in 1857, 58. After that, the British side started to look for favoured classes of people that they wanted to recruit, and they called them the martial races. Mm -hmm. Batans and Sikhs and Gurkhas and so on and Rajputs. They started sort of recruiting, recruiting exclusively them. from certain yeah. parts of India. The warrior type. The the warrior warrior type. They didn't want to, you know, certain people who rebelled against them, they thought we're not, we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're Suppress them. suppressing them and not going to include them. And, and that continued for a few generations, so there's a lot of interest in, you know, economic benefits, pensions, you know the thing, prestige by joining the army is a big employer of people in Punjab. So when World War One happens, 60% of basically the, 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 the Indian F war effort is, comes from Punjab. Now a lot of that recruitment happens under, it's a voluntary army, but a lot, there's a lot of coercion going on on the ground, mm -hmm. right? So the British officials are setting targets and the people on the ground, the, the, the headmen and the zeldars and all this sort of stuff, they're putting pressure on, on armed junta to, to sign up. Okay. Lots of pressure so they can meet their targets and get their rewards. Mm -hmm. um, and in that, there's all, there are people who are completely anti-colonial Gadarites, you know, the Gadar party. Mm -hmm. Now, during the war, they introduced, the British introduced wartime legislation of arrest and detention to, to suppress political um, opposition. Right? Okay. And so that's what happens during the war. War's coming to an end in 1918, armistice. And they're realizing we have to demobilize all these troops. Now there's, you know, Hundreds of thousands of Indian troops who've been trained, they're armed, they're coming back to India. Mm -hmm. All these uh, prisoners, political prisoners, they've got to be released too because the legislation is only for wartime. Right? So it's a, it's a very dangerous cocktail yeah. of, of Indian. Now, Indian troops in Europe have seen the white man bleed. They've seen the French, the English, the Germans, the Gaudier, who, who are consider themselves superior. Mm -hmm. mm. They've seen them at their worst, at broken, you know, defeated. Right. And, and, and killed. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the British establishment is incredibly worried that look, we're, we've invited ourselves, uh, we've got a dangerous situation going on here. We've mm. got to continue this wartime legislation. Uh, and they do it because they're saying there's still anti-colonial elements. So that's the key thing. And there's a, an act that is brought back in, or brought in, which is an extension of these regulations called the Rowlett Act, named after a judge yeah. who had a committee. And the, in protest, that was in March 1919, just a few weeks before Jilin Wanabag happened. In the protests uh, that kicked off, there were protests in Delhi and Lahore against this 
you know, anti-Indian sort of self-determination thing. Also, when the, the Indians gave support in World War I, they thought, we need, we're going to get something out of this. Mm -hmm. Quid pro quo. Dominion status. Self-rule. Not independence, it's self-rule. Self-rule. Okay? So all of these things mixing up create this atmosphere where protests are kicking off, hartals are happening in Amritsar, day-long shutdowns of businesses okay. to protest. In that mix, two local leaders, Dr. Satyapal and Dr. Yes. Saifuddin Kichlu, are arrested and exiled out of Punjab. Right. Protests kick off on the 10th of April. People go to the Deputy Commissioner's office uh, in Amritsar and try and uh, get the, the release. Yeah. And then they're fired upon. Mm. Right? And mm -hmm. that whole mix, you know, it's all tensions rising. Then 20 Indians are shot by the, the British forces. Tiny, British are tiny forces. Remember, in, in, in India, 200,000 Brits are ruling 200 million, mm. like 1 to 2,000 ratio. Yeah. So they use firepower and, and they've got people on the ground on their side, Indians. That's the That's a, yeah. Uh, so then the, the crowd's gone a rampage. Then, then basically civil law ends and this chap, General Dyer, who's in Jalandhar, comes up to Amritsar. No one asks him to come up. He does it of his own volition. He's just left, he, he came, uh, I think he was in Delhi, just escaped the rights there. So in his mind, he's like, well, this is a make or break situation. Mm -hmm. You know, things would go terribly wrong. And they, he's bringing to mind what happened 60 years earlier when the Indian Sipahis, basically, they, they went against the British and they killed men, women, children. Yeah. European. And then the European, the British then used enormous force and terrorism to, to squash that movement, to bring the Mughal Emperor back on the throne. Mm -hmm. you go? And they used, Sikhs were 50-50. 50% /50. 50 yeah. were against the British, 50% were for the British in the mutiny. Well, before going further, to see 50-50, Galkiti, I'd like to clear. Uh, I'm not going away from the subject, but it's important that uh, I last week's show was that I had a lot of call. I said, it was very nice that we mm -hmm. should carry on. That's why we're doing the second show. Mm -hmm. Somehow there was little accusation, uh, not directly, that Geneva East Africans, again, uh, they were saying all that time, even up to now, that they were happy with the Gora Raj. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah? I had a lot of time, but I had a little bit of a summary. When the East Africans came to see we were happy with the Gora Raj, they were talking about the East African countries. Sure. But 100% they condemned what happened in India at the Jalewala Bank. Right. No I mean, way. I don't know the history, particular history, but you can see that in, when they you know, they, they were making the railway lines, the loony... Did I tell you see, during the war time, till like again, huh? the strongest uh, labourer came out of Punjab. Absolutely. Sorry, majority Punjab twice again. They took them to build the railway line from the coast up to the mm -hmm. north of uh, Africa. Yeah. Uh, Tera so mile, uh, black Africa with the yellow fever, hot tarah di bumari sigi. The Indians go killed with the disease, with a man eating lion, mm -hmm. lekin kisse tarah gore bolo koi mishandlement, mm -hmm. ja abuse, ja kuch mistreatment si hoi kadi mm -hmm. bhi. Haan, go kaale anu karde sigi. But our people were respected, they yeah. used to work like railroads. That's why we used to say that Gora Raj is good, so it would be a better year. Well, the interesting thing is this, that if you go back to when Punjab and the Empire, the Sikh Empire was taken over, the British were brutal against anyone who was against them. Exactly. Yeah. When the Battle of Sabra happened in, in 1846, the last battle of the First Anglo-Sikh War, in revenge they said that some Sikhs had, you know, um, cut up some wounded British soldiers. And in revenge, when the Sikhs were trying to get across the river, Satluj, mm -hmm. 10,000 Sikhs, they, the British brought their horse artillery up to the bank and blew them to bits, non-stop cannonade. 10,000 yeah. men were killed in that river. It was running red with blood. And so they, they had this thing where all the people who were against them, they had this idea of, you know, you've got a body, you cut off the head, so you take all the, the thinkers and the leaders out of the country, mm -hmm. Banaras, Allahabad, wherever, uh, Andaman Islands or mm -hmm. Singapore and some of Bhai Maharaj Singh's case. And you basically have the body, which you then manipulate and use raw recruits. You know exactly. If luck become, they become followers. They become the followers exactly. So when Sikhs were once making history in their own way, they became bit players in somebody else's history. So this is the key thing that you you kind of up the average of the people who are going to support the Raj because you get yeah. rid of all the people who aren't supporting the Raj. Yeah. So it's kind of it's not nearly always a good test, and you see that in um, in Amritsar, 1919. I mean, the Sikhs. If you look at the population of Amritsar. Majority is Muslim, 45%. There's about 35, 40% Hindu. Sikhs are 15%. Mm. And, but the Sikhs, uh, and, and of, um, of India, Sikhs are less than 1%. And in war, they were at the beginning the of the war, 20% yeah, of the Indian army. Exactly. So Sikhs were hugely in favor of the army, but they were, 
in terms of the British Raj, but there are also elements that were against. And they, no one could foresee partition, uh, partition, the independence movement. So they assumed the whole thing about, you know, the sun's never going to set on the British Empire was true. They believed the marketing. Because mm. they were getting money. And economics is the key to keeping people happy. You just keep yeah. them paying, make sure they can pay for their daughter's weddings or they can That's buy, it, you know, extend their jameen or whatever it is or this, that and the other. or got capital to build up businesses. You keep that flowing, yeah. then no one's going to complain. Yeah, they're not going to fight. They're not going to fight. So that's what the, the, the aim of the game was, uh, economic betterment. And, uh, and it was a marketing exercise as well. Let's not forget, that's how you get things mm -hmm. across. So in, if we go back to the whole March, the, uh, so April the 10th, these killings in exile, uh, martial law, or a form of martial law. Sorry, Mafi Chawang, I showed you about 30 seconds ago, Mr. Break. Okay. So in the sense of time, very fast, Chandra, there's a lot to <laughs> talk about. Absolutely. Uh, both interesting, I think we're going to concentrate on Jelly Mala Bhagwale after the break. Please to see a set of program deck there. As you coach is going to take a job, you do has to hoya, care hoya, kate hoya, or key hona cheda, or the apau ki hega. Yeah, this is interesting now. This is very interesting. Now, deep into the core of everything. Stay tuned in. As you told you, break like if it will like a cade. Thank you. Just a second. अकाल चैनल नो सब्सक्राइब करो नवी वीडियोस दी नोटिफिकेशन दे ले बेल आइकन नो क्लिक करना ना भूलना वेलकम बैक इन द सेकंड पार्ट अगर तुसी हुने देखना शुरू कीता अच्छी जेले बले बाग वाले गल कर रहे हैं सारे नाल स्टूडेंट्स आर प्रणजीत सिंह असी बिल्कुल कंसंट्रेट कर दे बिकॉज़ यू नो असी पता है सारे नु पता के बेइंसाफी हुई है जुर्म होया असी 100 साल इनु बर्दाश्त कीता क्यों कीता मनु समझ नहीं आ रही असी वो बारह गल् कर रहे हैं हूँ वो गल मैं अपने सरदार अमरजीत पहला स्टार्ट करा पर जिस दिन मैं पहले इस प्रीति का कोर्ट पढ़िया से डिले इन जस्टिस इज अनजस्टिस इज अपोलॉजी गुड इनफ आर वी हैप्पी विद दैट आई थिंक एन अपोलॉजी वुड बी समथिंग मीनिंगफुल टू द फैमिलीज ऑफ द विक्टिम्स बट द डाउन साइड ऑफ एन अपोलॉजी फ्रॉम अ गवर्नमेंट इज दैट इट एक्चुअली गेट्स दम ऑफ द हुक दे कैन ड्रॉ अ लाइन अंडरनीथ द इशू दे कैन कैंड से वॉ दैट्स इट वी डन इट and we don't want to go any further with it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Whereas the, the, what we, we should be aiming for maybe uh, is to embed the story of this massacre, which is part of British history, Yes. in the school curriculum. So every 100%. Children, every child should know what happened. It's, you know, we need to open up this whole Pandora's box of empire because there's so much hidden. So we need to shine a light on it. Do you think it. it's like a taboo subject that it hasn't been put in? Curriculum. I, I think it's completely, that's completely right. But the, um, if you think about this, look, it's, after the massacre, it was debated in the House of Parliament, in the House of Commons, in the House of Lords, then 1920. Uh, Dyer, the chap who actually did the shooting, General Dyer, got a photograph of him here. He, he you can yeah, see him here from our book, uh, Eyewitness Amritsar. You know, he's a very stiff looking, mm. you know, official um, military officer of the British Crown. He was born in India, by the way, but educated uh -huh. in the UK. Mm -hmm. he, he said, I received the overwhelming support of most of the British in India for the action of what I did. I saved, you know, he was the man um, who, who saved India for Britain, basically. That's how he was um, uh, thought of by the British. When he came back to England uh, a year after the event, um, a newspaper called the Morning Post. He was called back then. Yes. Well, he was, he was basically let go. No, uh, he wasn't retired. He was basically, yeah, quietly retired. They basically said, we don't, you've not got a job here anymore and we don't want to give you a job in England. So you just retire. Now, interestingly, there's a right-wing or right-leaning newspaper called the Morning Post who raised a fund for the man who saved India. Mm -hmm. And they raised from normal people, all, all classes of um, Brits, £26,000, which today is over a million pounds. A million pounds. And he, you know, Dyer used that to buy a cottage, cottage and he retired and settled, and settled down uh, for the rest of his life. Now, you, you have to think, if, mo if he's saying most of the people in India, the Brits in India supported his action, and people here were supporting his action overwhelmingly, then you think, where do those attitudes at that time... Where that do they stem we can, from? We can kill 500 mm -hmm. Indians, innocent people. We can shoot them to death. And not feel that bad about it because it was necessary, deemed necessary. Where did those attitudes go? That superiority complex that goes down to the next generation. Yeah. And then where did it go from there? The next generation. And that was I met that uh, those attitudes. And I'm sure you did when I was growing up in the 1970s. Britain, exactly. We were confronted with it. Yes. And almost today we're seeing similar. You know, with Brexit and what you know everything that's come exactly. out of that. This whole 
you know, xenophobic attitudes towards foreigners. It's all coming back. So is it because from the India, in India, they suppress their it's lack of education? Do you think that's why it's being suppressed? Unarmed people, totally, they were not fighting against anybody. Uh, they were trying to escape, in fact, the firing. General Dyer the fire start kita. They were just trying to find the route from Jalamala Bagh. Jalamala Bagh, last time Gal Kitti, Bode Pidia Galane, only one person can pass through that. And they were standing on each other to jump the 10 feet wall, mm -hmm. whatever. Agar Bande escape Karine, Dorde, Ne, Apri Jan Bacharine, uh, unarmed again, to see Unna to kill Kadde. So, how do you justify yeah, that? This is I mean, the just. Well, I, I, th th I think this goes back to the whole point of. Why we did this book, Arun Samrasa, right? It's, and the apology. Move the apology to the side. I mean, it's a political mm -hmm. beast, the mm -hmm. apology. If we, normal people just move it to the side and focus on the story, then you'll have far greater impact on, on for example, Brits. To say, this is your story. Do you, you know, what do you think? We well, should be well, asking them to get into the story. And that's why yeah. you use, we thought the best way in the search for truth, the search for authenticity, the best thing to do is to present the imagery and the voices of the people who are present. Let them tell the story. They're mm -hmm. the best people to tell their story. Because there's a lot of people that still want to know why. Exactly. And, well, you know, we can go back and say, look, on that day, on the 10th, do you know what happened on the 10th of April? These, this First time, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the shooting happened and then, you know, 20 Indians killed. They went on a rampage, killed three or four Europeans and you know, went to a European part of Amritsar, uh, the whole bazaar mm -hmm. in North Amritsar. And then they went and attacked a few of them, not a lot, but a few of them went and attacked this lady missionary, Marcella Sherwood. She was a Christian missionary. Okay, yes. Uh, they took her in the street, they knocked her off a bike and beat her up. Um, and she was actually saved by people living in that street. Mm -hmm. right? Now, that led to an infamous uh, crawling order after the massacre. Dyer found out about this, that a, a white woman had been beaten up by brown men, Indian men. Was it, it before was or outrage. after? This happened before. Before. After the massacre, we'll get onto this, he actually enforced an order that that street, anyone who wanted to go down that street, any man, even if you lived there, you had to crawl on all fours. Oh you God. see it in this photograph here. They're pointing a bayonet, a fixed bayonet, rifle with a bayonet on it, at that gentleman. Yeah. Right? Can, you, can you use a camera point, Karo? Shukdev, uh, can you show that, please, if possible, bring it close to the ear. Uh, very clear. Yeah, and there's even a cartoon down on the other side later Thank on the you. year. Yeah. Thank you. Thank right? you. Right to to actually raise the point how Ireland and India are both being suppressed by the British, and so when a form Dyer, of revenge. It's a form of revenge. When this is stamping down. Yeah. You, know, you want to break the soul of this nation. You can shoot them, kill them, but really you want to you want to break them and their, crush their soul. Their spirit. Mm. So what happened was so in tenth, so, um, you know, you see some of the damage being done by the rioters and the banks. You know, the bank managers thrown off the roof and stuff and burnt alive. So it's very mm -hmm. brutal stuff. So Dai comes along and says, right, I'm going to take control of the situation. So he arrests people um, and, and, you know, tries to uh, enforce order. He then makes announcements on the 12th saying no public gatherings. Two announcements are made. That's right. Yeah. But they're made in very, he doesn't understand the city of Amritsar. You know, Amritsar's a walled city. He's not, never been there. Well, he didn't understand that there were Saki's going Masaki's on. Saki's happening. There's a cattle fair, massive event that got cancelled. And therefore, everyone's milling around. But Saki obviously sees There's other events um, happening. Other yeah. events happening. He doesn't understand the city. He makes announcements in certain parts of the city, but nowhere near enough people here. And then a, um, a protest is called, a, 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 get, a meeting is called in Jalimanabad. And it's not the first time. Meetings have always been called there, right? In March, against the Rowlett Act, meetings have been called. So people gathered, or people just turned up because they had nothing else to do. Now, I want to just stress, if there was not enough people that knew about it, the, the, then the, obviously, the but hold on, not enough people knew about the ban because you weren't allowed more than five people. So how was the word going to be spread? Well, th this is the whole, uh, the, the nonsense of the matter, that there was, it wasn't an effective method of communication. Exactly. Um, it, it just wasn't the right approach. And he wanted to basically, uh, die, wanted to enforce sort of terror effect. And look, you can see, I don't know if you can see in the picture here, mm -hmm. this is a, a close up of a map of the Ramanda Saab, and that's Jalimwana Bagh next to it. And then you've got a map of Jalimwana Bagh here. Right. So can that be? I don't know if that can be seen. Yeah. What was this used to be like? These kind of events, which you dasi ka. Well, I'll explain. Jallianwala Bagh comes. Oh. There's two words here. Oh. Jallianwala and Bagh. Jallianwala is Jallianda, the, the Jalla Jalla family. They came from a village called Jalla, and they had the, they owned this land. 
and there was a Qatra, a quarter of Amritsar. Jalla, Jalla is a village, am I right? It's a village and there's a family associated with that village. They are a noble family in Ranjit Singh's time. But Jalla, Jalla, Pindi, if Jalla, there were a lot of people who were in the village who died in the village of Jalla Mala Bagdavich. They somehow, because they were in the village, are they connected with their land? Well, the land, at the time of the massacre, it was owned by about 30 different people. Uh -huh. So they may have sold up their shares. It was basically a disused piece of land, irregular quadrangle. You know, it, it's kind of like a, one of those, it's a green, a bit of green area in a very dense city, walled city. So it was quite uh, useful, but at the same time, it was just a wasteland, mm -hmm. raising point. Kids used to go and play, and they used to have gatherings there. But it didn't, it belonged to a whole lot of different people, and it was surrounded irregularly by, you know, different houses and the walls, right, all along. Now, this, at that time, all these people gathered. Estimates go from 5,000 all the way up to 20,000. There are eyewitnesses who are watching what's happening. Mm -hmm. And we know that Dyer, when he turned up, he wanted to, uh, he heard about this gathering, and he didn't have the gumption to say, well, I need to send people in to see what, the, what this what is going is made on. up of. He'd already made his mind up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach them a lesson. Oh, because because that's mm. It's a rebel army. Oh, hatred, you know, David, that's what it was. So he turns up, I mean, that's a shot of the bog there. You can see one side of it. He comes in, in there's a part of it here where he turns through. The front cover of the book is actually the view he would have had. Mm -hmm. This is the view through the alleyway. Mm -hmm. And that he would have seen, that's, there's a smad here, a small shrine in the cover in the tree and so on. And that's mm -hmm. where he would have seen all these people. His troops lined up, they were taking 30 seconds to line up. And now who are the troops? They're a mixture of uh, 50 riflemen made from three regiments, Gurkhas, Sikh regiment and a Sindh regiment, mm. Sindh rifles. Um, there may have been Sikh troops amongst the soldiers, but no one knows. But they're definitely Gurkhas and probably Bataans, you know, Baluchis. Mm -hmm. And the British off, right often did that. They often deployed troops in areas that they had no natural ethnic connection to the people. Right. Otherwise, they may feel sympathy for them, yes. and not follow orders. Dyer announced the firing, but you know what? He actually wanted to take into the Bagh. You won't believe this. He actually wanted to take in armored cars, and they're the armored cars. Mm -hmm he was looking to take in. They are mounted with machine guns. Mm. The original plan was to come in a car at the back, uh, on top of, a, of this mounted armored car, and make his announcement, and have the machine guns ready. 30 seconds to line up the 50 riflemen. People, the speech is going on, and the speech is going on are actually uh, resolutions. There's five resolutions being read. Resolutions about how the families of the Satepal and Kichilu are you know, distressed, and we need to send their you know, support and so on. And there was third resolution being read when the order was given to fire. And, you know, they had Lee Enfield rifles. They opened fire, and the bullets started to pierce through bodies. And it was not just one body being hit, but two mm, or three. With one bullet. One bullet, two or three being taken out, almost point blank, you know, as close as from here to the wall. But these are the helpless people who are trying to escape. They, they, well, they, they didn't know what was going on, but then everyone, all of a sudden, they didn't turn around and try to try and attack Dyer, and this exactly. is one of his rationales mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm. They actually fled to get as far away as possible. Now, what's absolutely incredible is, and not many people know this, I mean, the age range of those who were killed was from at least eight up to 80. Would you know the number? We know... Because uh, speculation is well, very different, yeah. different arena. Yeah, there's lots of speculation. We'll come on to that in a second for May. Just on the constitution of this group, there were World War I veterans in that group. Because they said to people, there's an eyewitness account we've got in the book that talks about how they, the chap says, those with military experience said, get down to the ground, hit mm -hmm. the floor. Because mm -hmm. they'd been used to that in you know, World War I. The exactly. Tenses, you know? And then this witness said, well, we got to the ground, but then they started shooting near the ground. Mm. Just targeted fire. And imagine this, they had each soldier would have, they shot in, in total for eight to 10 minutes. They shot 33 rounds, a total each, a total of 1,650 rounds. Unbelievable. 1,650 shots, bullets fired. And Dyer, he was telling his troops, occasionally there'd be a lull in the fire, and people going this way and that way, as you know, it's well, mm -hmm. well known. And you know, people trying to climb up trees or over walls or go through the exits. Or there was even uh, the Huntsley Channel, you know, the canal from yeah. the Huntsley that fed into the Amritsar Sarovar of the Hermundar Sahib. They're trying to get into that, that to escape. And it was complete mayhem, obviously, or hiding under bodies, corpses. Yeah. And in that whole um, commotion, he's targeting the fire. Shoot that way, shoot this way, get them. Mm. Right? And it's complete and utter madness. It looks like Grajni personally, yes. he just wanted to... He said that I believe them to be a rebel army and they were going to then overrun the Europeans in Amritsar and then India is going to kick off and 
But so you don't think he's done quickly? His mindset is completely... Turned good pretty quick. That's a very strong uh, very question. Now, there, when he came over to England, he was brought back here, and you said there were 26,000 pounds were collected for yes. to, to settle him a down. Fund, that's fund right. Bagara. But you go in their right mind, whether Jida Preeti ka ke education, educated hai ke nahi hai ke, ke you will start raising a fund for a man who's brutally murdered people? It's a brutally murder way. Yeah. I, 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 this is a really difficult point because you, you think if people knew, and, and I want to read you a quote in a second, if, if the English knew what happened, they may not have done it. It all depends on how it's pitched in the media. But before you answer mm -hmm. that, just recently Channel 4 uh, done a documentary on the Jelly yes, that's right. And oh, the, a lot of people didn't know her yeah. great great granddaughter is alive. Caroline Dye, yeah. And she made a statement to the uh, presenter who was there at the time, that he done it for the good for the India. Manodi Samajani, what the, good uh, was it for the India? Yeah. Well, if you want to put yourself in their mindset, this is a, this is a race that seem well, they seen themselves as superior to the Indians and they're bringing civilization to the Indians. At the same time, obviously, we know they're asset stripping, they're bringing resources out, everything's being sucked dry to fund what's going on in England and other parts of the empire. So in their mindset, they have to come up with some rationale, as mad as it may seem to us now, looking back. But at the time, it's all about holding this thing together. Mm. So they make, they, they, they basically, it's a propaganda game. Mm. Yeah. They're not going to tell anyone. The numbers, it goes back to numbers. No one knows the true numbers. It's 379 believed to have been, that's the official figure, the, um, by witnesses and door-to-door -door, um, Then you got the surgeons, the doctors. Yeah, people think oh, five to six hundred, five to six hundred mm. were killed, they think. Did a door-to-door, you know, near district, you check it out, not the far distance where people have come from distance. Yeah, yeah absolutely. There's, there's so much missing, so the, the true figure could be up to a thousand. Mm, exactly. Mm. It's not beyond, you so know, so the Yes, the Let's quote is this, now class. there's this one incredible gentleman called Charles Free Andrews. He was a Christian missionary and a social a uh, reformer, as a photograph of him here, um, let's just get him here, this chap here. So after the massacre, a few months after, you know, there's a big curfew, big clampdown, press wasn't allowed in, no one was allowed in, and then afterwards Nehru, Motila Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru, people like Andrews, they were allowed to visit and do investigations on a private basis, mm -hmm. and then they published their findings. And he, after, you know, it was November, I think, in 1919, he, um, before departing and going, leaving Amritsar, uh, he, he, he gave a speech and it was an incredibly moving speech and we opened the book with it and the quote is this, he said, I could not sleep or eat or even speak to anyone after what I saw. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go apart and be alone. It was a massacre, a butchery. I feel that if only I could take each single Englishman and show him out of my eyes what I have seen, he would feel the same as I. Yeah. And how powerful is that? that Imagine is powerful. It. So it's a, there's probably a huge amount of propaganda to suppress what actually happened. Mm -hmm. And the government reluctantly set up inquiries under commission. But, you know, they, the, the findings, they, they, there was disagreement as to what the actual causes were and so on and so forth. But they all agreed that Dyer couldn't stay in India as a military officer. Yeah. Exactly. But in England, he was the man who saved India because the whole casting back to the 1850s when this big uprising took place with mm -hmm. the, the, the military in those times. Indian military and they're saying well we don't care about Indians we we're, empire is all about I've got my country and I'm gonna take over your bit it's a zero-sum game either I've got power or you've got it mm -hmm. we can't share power mm -hmm. so one of us is gonna lose and then it's just how you play out your losing game yeah that's what it is and, and obviously in society empire is clever they use the middlemen the aristocratic families you know to control well, the masses we've yeah. got last eight minutes to go done pretty quick Marisha. Uh, mm -hmm. time is you can never get hold of it. Yeah. Absolutely. It runs, we're going to run after Time stands still for no one. Well, now uh, this is uh, why we have done this exactly. second program. But we've done a second program. Right. We started with the first one, we started with the first one, we started with the first uh, one, we're looking for apology. Mm -hmm. what, what's the future? What are you, what the community, what are we heading for? What, uh, I hope it's something going to be happening now after, not going to wait another hundred years, are we? No. No, that would be a, a monstrosity and, and uh, a complete, shame. Complete shame uh, in terms of the story. We, we need to educate people. That's why books like The Eyewitness at Amrits are, are so important and other books out there. We were, very, we were helped by a, a scholar called Dr. Kim Wagner, who's done incredible work on this subject. Yeah, these are non-Indian doing incredible work on a story that is ours. And remember, it's not a Sikh story. Uh, Hindu, yes, Muslim, Sikh, that. Yeah. That. Christian, this belongs to everyone. And it's, it's a really big story. We need to get this story, this book, and other books into the hands of decision makers. 
be it in Parliament, be it in education, wherever. But you may be the mark, mm-hmm. no, but a strong point there, eh, because listen very carefully when you're talking, right in the beginning, uh, when your mother was pregnant with you, and obviously it seemed, and it does work, okay, जनरेशन publishing where we tell our story to the world to ourselves we get the best writers to write about our stories because our history our culture is incredibly rich and it deserves the best yeah and if we do that we will safeguard things and we pass on something to the next generation and at kashi house our our aim is to we're not looking out for ourselves we're we're, we're doing this work so that our children's grandchildren have got something otherwise it's going to get, get diluted it will get diluted lost misused by those in powers uh, political seats and positions who you know we and then it's going to get po- propaganda again the propag- yeah, po- politics is the is the poison when it comes to un- unbiased history so we need to have really strong uh, literature men women children everyone needs to, we need to be writing books for everyone in our community and we need to be telling our story to others because people are really interested but if we don't create the resources and imagine i've got four kids three three girls and a boy um if they ask me a question I'd bet sure as well I sh- you know I should really really know the answer mm-hmm. or I should be able to point them to a resource pick a book off the table exactly. or the shelf and say either yeah. yeah. that's an answer again that that's the, that's that it is the uh, because their interest is open for li- a little window of opportunity to get there to to pry that interest mm-hmm. further if you don't answer the question compellingly or you haven't got something that they can get into a resource a book or some such some such it'll extinguish and you don't know when it's going to come back again exactly. opening is you don't know you might miss the opportunity No. But you said yeah. only five minutes ago, isn't it? I only want to catch the opportunity so that we miss out. I want you to look at the camera. Okay, but you know, there's strong lovers. Just uh, like okay, we need somebody uh, Udham Singh born who way not to take their revenge, mm-hmm. but but to follow this and bring this to an end. That if you never look at this, that the launch of the mark to maintain it or swal or if a politician, a little bit of just that to see that the one who got affected, or that the family, a little bit of school will get, peace will get. uh you know they they say one step forward they to see the suke ki kya na chahiye apni public no this is a wider community you giving a message mm. to not only the sikh community to the wider community well we need to support creative people in our community we need to support authors we need to support uh uh screenwriters films all that sort of stuff there's a whole a massive need to tell stories and you know we've all heard stories from our parents and our grandparents and they've had a huge impact i'm sure on many people and it it's up to us now you know we're in a society where we're competing against the the big film studios and and the big publishers and in order for us to have a chance to actually get our voice heard and for our children who are being influenced by all these different things then we need to uh step up and um produce and invest and you know uh invest in uh books and exhibitions and and films and museums and in, you know institutions that are going to be there to serve our needs in the future and to inspire people like Paul was saying you know the next of them seeing and others to actually take our communities uh, forward but you can yeah. um maybe you know on call channel to wapas like you know because we are part of it you are part of it so is the whole sangat part mm-hmm. of it agar asi e cheezan te aj na baithe hunde na kise english channel to asi adha ghanta borrow karke a program karna se hmm and we would have been restricted as ki kya sakte the ki nahi kya sakte the yeah this is some people need to understand mm-hmm. ke sun apna channel you got freedom Take. of speech yeah to see hard tarah the within reasons uh, keeping off comb bagara regulation apne dimag ch rakh ke tusi apna program proper execute kar sakde ho tusi loka tak pahuncha sakde ho and you know this is so important uh rajnik media book ka di gal kiti hai publisher di gal kiti hai main media di gal karda hai putting all this together this is going to bring some answers and also because imagine if something like this was to happen today if a massacre was to happen to you today see how would we handle that how would we handle it would we let it go we no, wouldn't we let it go do, do you know what it, what's really fascinating about media is how powerful it is and the influence you can have 
you know, after 1984, the Sikhs were in a very difficult position, um, and the community was taken in all sorts of different directions, resources sucked in to all sorts of different things, and we stopped telling our story. Mm. Mm. And we, we are now trying to reignite that whole storytelling passion. We must. And we have to, or else we're doomed because the competition for our children's attention and for our money. Again, it will be diluted, strong. just like Maharaja, the Ranjit Singh story, it's going to get diluted. Now is the time to act. Okay, well, can I just put in one small you plug, can, if I can? Mm -hmm. So our next book, I mean, I wouldn't say Amrit says available on our uh, website, kashihouse.com. Uh, it's very inexpensive and it's beautifully illustrated and, and you'll get a lot of this. This is a gateway book into the bigger story. So we're getting into it. It's almost cinematic. Interesting. It must be nice to know what's happened, mm -hmm. 100%. Absolutely. I mean, it gives uh, you knowledge. And knowledge is power. Uh, That's the key. And exactly. it gives you a sense of who you are and your identity. And it's not there to get people angry. It's to get to let people be informed. So educate. They can do, and they can educate, exactly. And then our next book coming out next month is this incredible uh, uh, inspirational book on superwomen, South Asian superwomen. So it includes people from India, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, where sadly the, the bombings have happened, and Nepal. And it's beautifully illustrated with these stories to inspire the next generation of our, our daughters, basically, our sisters, our mums. Very nice. And, and so on. So we encourage everyone. This is what we want to try and do is build as big an audience as possible to, to learn their cultural heritage and to get inspired by it because this is the transformative stuff. And mm -hmm. you can tell, I mean, I've been transformed by our history. It's taken me off of a path that, you know, lots of us, this world doesn't need another Sikh accountant. But we only got one minute to go. <laughs> I need to wrap up. Mm -hmm. And Akhadavich uh, Mathur Dafir, honestly, really appreciate that you took time to come down. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to do very many shows of this kind because two, one or two are not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, if if Palenka get if you want this going on and, and get some answers, we need to really hit it hard. Absolutely. If, if the community gets behind it, it's okay. You know, there's a few. Our team is very small. You know, two two uh, full-time members doing all of this with the support of a, a wider team. If the community gets behind it, we'll conquer everything. Thank That's you, sir. Thank you for very nice to go. We've well, got 10 seconds to yeah. go. Anything you want to finish yeah. it off? We, please, everybody, do take your time to have a read of these books and get hold of them and educate yourself. Now is the time to stand up for Thank you, Priti. Thank everything. you so much. Please yeah. keep watching the Culture Channel and the Sport Kalaro. Next week, same time. Family, Takoyi, Tabta Krabraka. Sasikar.